ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेलकम टू द लाइव रीडिंग फ्रॉम कैंटो वन रीटेलिंग ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम द सेजेस ऑफ नैमिशारण्य एंड वी आर गोइंग टू बिगिन द चैप्टर टू After hearing the sage's six questions, Sutta answered the first two. He explains that life's highest attainment is to develop one's loving relationship with Krishna, and that life's most essential duties are to continuously hear about, glorify, and remember Him. Now this is from second chapter of Bhagavatam, Canto One, verses one to four. As was his custom, Sutta recited. prayers petitioning divine mercy that we all should always when we are going to read understand or uh, have some discussion about the transcendental topics we should always recite the prayers and invoke the divine presence he said i bow down to shukadev goswami who left home while still a boy for the welfare of all people he later spoke shrimad bhagavatam the signs of god to emperor parikshit the sages raised their arms and called out glories to shukadev go swami with closed eyes sutta spoke in prayerful tones before reciting shrimad bhagavatam which destroys our ignorance i offer obeisance to its compiler the vyas sage vyasadev and to its patron deities the divine incarnations nara and narayan obeisance also to the goddess of learning saraswati and to the object subject of the work lord krishna so as we know the subject of all the literatures is lord krishna himself now from second chapter fifth verse again and again the assembled sages raised their arms and joyfully echoed sutta's invocation with cries of jai jai sutta waited patiently until his excited audience settled he first praised their intelligent inquiries by asking such questions you have rendered a great service to the world since they relate to lord krishna the answers will satisfy everyone's heart Sutta then addressed the first two questions life's highest goal is to awaken spontaneous unmotivated and uninterrupted loving service to the transcendent lord this alone will satisfy the mind and it is called prema bhakti so beautiful definition of prema bhakti has been given i'll repeat it life's highest goal is to awaken spontaneous unmotivated an uninterrupted loving service to the transcendent lord this alone satisfy the mind and it is called prema bhakti prema bhakti and the, the means to achieve this divine love is the process of sadhana bhakti so all of us we are doing sadhana bhakti at the moment our goal is to achieve this prema bhakti where we can have spontaneous unmotivated and uninterrupted loving service for the supreme lord chapter 2 7th verse shonak asks how does prema bhakti satisfy the mind prema bhakti bestows knowledge and experience of the form qualities and sweetness of the lord which results in complete detachment from material allurements Chapter two, verse eight. Wonderful! Exclaimed Shonak. But achieving this will surely take time. Sutta. In the meanwhile, is it not imperative? People also follow their social and moral duties, known as varnashram dharma. Varnashram dharma, as as all of you know, what we do to sustain our material lives. These other duties are there to help us properly organize our lives, so we can make sufficient time. to hear about krishna said sutta this is our main duty the more we hear from the lord's pure devotee the more we will relish such hearing and become attracted to krishna 
That should be our only goal. If our taste for discussing Krishna is not increasing, then all our other duties are unless useless waste of time. So we should all try to pray to Lord that please Lord situate me in such a occupation that I can have time to worship you, to think about you, to remember you and render service to you. <clears throat> Chapter 2 verse 9 Shonak noticed that some of the audience looked perplexed. They were probably wondering about the four great aims of life described in the Vedas Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha that is morality, economic development that is the earth, sense pleasure that is the karma and moksha that is salvation and of course dharma is the morality. Were these not essential? Shonak put his doubt to Sutta who replied these four objectives encourage materialistic people to act morally but they do not lead to life's highest goal. They are therefore rejected by the wise who only endeavor for the ultimate salvation or in other words the prema bhakti. Even if material gain comes, one desiring love for Krishna should never use it to increase sense gratification. So this is a word of caution for all of us that if we even get a lot of material gain in our life, we should not just get swayed by enjoyment only, we should control our sense gratification because it is such a well it is such a unstoppable uh, greed which can never be filled so the more you will enjoy the more you will enjoy your senses the more you will want to and there will never be an end to this in chapter 2 verse 10 Shonak looked uncertain Uncertain was this realistic, my dear Sutta, he said after a few moments. Can we really expect householders not to seek sense pleasure? After all, eating, sleeping, mating and shelter are necessary for most people. Surely not everyone is expected to live like an ascetic. Sutta replied, The wise pursue worldly gain only as much as required for health and peace for mind. They do not waste their lives striving for material gain. Their main concern is to understand the absolute truth. Chapter 2 verse 11 Elaborating on this point, he continued, According to one's consciousness, the absolute truth is perceived in three phases, beginning with the impersonal, all-pervasive Brahman, this is the Lord's spiritual energy and is the basis of all existence, material and spiritual. All of you esteemed sages are familiar with Brahman realization which is described extensively in the Upanishads. When one becomes more progressive in spiritual practice, he wants to know Brahman's origin and basis. After all, energy must have an energetic source. So we should always bear this in our mind that all the opulences and everything which are alluring our senses, they all belong to a source and who is the source? The energetic source. A more advanced yogi thus searches out the all-pervading localized aspect of God known as the Paramatma or Super Soul who is located both within everyone's heart and also in every atom of material existence. The highest realization of the absolute truth however is known as Bhagwan or the personality of Godhead who possesses supreme opulence. At this phase of realization, the yogi sees the Lord's form along with his loving associates. He is then able to join in with their sublime pastimes. All three phases of realizations are, however, of the same absolute truth. So the Paramatma, then Bhagwan. And the presence of Bhagwan in each and every atom of material existence, they're all coming from Bhagwan himself. Shonak wanted Sutta to elucidate this point. How can one 
how can one truth be seen in three different ways see here the sun rays so the indicated the bright sunshine that shone through the tree branches this solar energy is like brahman and for some less intelligent creatures it is their only knowledge of the sun however we however know it emanates from the sun globe this higher energy is like the is like realizing the super soul a person with celestial vision can actually see the sun god himself and this is like realizing the personality of god bhagwan all three aspects of the same sun so the super soul the brahman and bhagwan they're all the aspects of the supreme personality of godhead all three aspects of the same sun but what one sees depends upon his consciousness chapter 2 verse 12 shona cast i each of the three different phases realized by different methods sutta replied although there are separate processes for realizing each phase it is not necessary to learn them all by correctly executing sadhana bhakti without desire for desires for material gain one can realize all three phases of the absolute chapter 2 verse 13 shonak thought for some moments and then said if the bhakt does not desire material gain does that mean he need not execute his varnashram dharma the wise do not neglect their societal responsibilities answered sutta they know that the purpose of this duty is to satisfy the lord indeed human society should cooperate jointly working with we are acting purely for krishna's pleasure without being imperceptibly influenced by the insidious desires for personal gain one must daily engage in the primary activities of sadhana bhakti that means attentively hearing about glorifying remembering and worshiping the lord by so doing we invite the lord's guidance which protects us from harboring false motives and making harmful choices so sadhana bhakti is very important for all of us we should do how much we can do and we should always try to advance in that chapter 2 verse 15 shonak again looked doubtful many find it hard to fit in these practices daily knowing the immense benefits of hearing and chanting about krishna who would be foolish enough to neglect this replied sutta such discussions act like a sword to sever the karmic entanglement that keeps us in misery chapter 2 verses 16 to 17 shonak persisted even when told about these benefits a person often does not have sufficient faith to prioritize his sadhana we always complain we have got this to do we have got that to do and within say take out 7 to 8 hours of your sleep and still you complain that uh, well we all complain i myself included that in the rest of the 15 16 hours we cannot fit bhagwan sadhana bhakti anywhere so we have to prioritize and we have to beg to lord that he arranges our lives nicely so that we can prioritize uh, the sadhana bhakti in our lives saying sutta anodded yes sadly this is true that is why great pure hearted devotees travel the earth by their association one gets a determination to regularly hear and chant about krishna when one takes seriously to this practice the lord as a super soul cleanses the heart of material desires which are the root cause of suffering which is very true even if you if your faith is not very strong in the lord but we know very well that the desires the material desires they are the major cause of suffering for all living entities chapter 2 verses 18 to 21 shonak said in kali yug pure devotees will be rare 
how will everyone have the opportunity to daily hear from such persons they kindly present books which explain krishna's teachings if you cannot hear from them in person you can study their writings roshila propat in our case what is the sign that we properly understand and applying their teachings our materialistic tendencies such as lust greed and anger will diminish and when they are almost gone we will be steady and focused in our devotional practices this stage of one's spiritual progress it is called nishtha what do you mean when you say almost gone sutta explained now the impurities in the heart come from various sources and have different stages of eradication at the stage of nishtha there is still an inclination for pious sense enjoyment now how does one become completely free from material desires shonak asked by attentive and steady sadhana practice now this is the practice with the s because it's a verb here one gradually loses interest in sensual pleasure and begins to enjoy hearing and chanting about krishna this stage is called ruchi and is characterized by freedom from lust so the first stage is called sad <coughs> nishtha and the second is ruchi and is character ruchi is characterized by freedom from lust greed anger hatred and illusion which arise from the influence of passion and ignorance of course they are the two mode of nature the lower mode of nature than the goodness then the devotee progresses to the stage of asakti asakti is the third stage when the mind becomes firmly attached to the lord's spiritual form when attachment deepens into a profound fondness for krishna it is known as bhava or rati this matures into prema pure love for krishna at which stage one ceases to identify with the material body and mind then the devotee attains the lord's direct audience and personally engages in his loving service directly experiencing his pastimes greatness sweetness and other qualities at this stage material miseries permanently cease chapter 2 verses 22 to 23 concluding his explanation of the different stages of sadhana bhakti sutta said therefore discerning transcendentalists only practice devotional service to krishna because it bestows the highest result and is easy and joyful to perform though most of the sages present were satisfied by this explanations a few looked disturbed shonak noticing their discontent recognized them to be worshippers of other deities they were no doubt wondering why sutta was advocating exclusive worship of krishna to give sutta the opportunity to address their confusion shonak said are you saying we should not worship vishnu brahma shiva and other avatars like ram and vara i thought they were all divine incarnation indeed they are replied sutta the lord incarnates in two ways either through the spiritual energy or through the material energy spiritual incarnations include ram vara matsya and kurma these are these are the part of the dash avatars bhagwan took the spiritual incarnations who are also worshipfuls when he incarnates through the material energy he manifests as three guna avatars or the incarnations of the material qualities as brahma he displays the mode of passion as vishnu he exhibits the mode of goodness to maintain it and as shiva he manifests the mode of ignorance to destroy it of these three only vishnu should be worshiped so we will continue from here onwards tomorrow uh, thanks for joining and just to give you a recap the different stages of sadhana bhakti are nishtha then it is ruchi then asakti then bhav then prem hari om tat sat and hari krishna